Hello and welcome back. And if you've been following the channel, you may have picked up on a certain pattern that I like to release videos in. I like to cycle through my three main projects one at a time. Uh, so I have the vacuum tube computer that I'm working on, I have the Centurion mini computer that I'm working on, and I have the HP 150A oscilloscope that I'm working on. And uh, well, the HP 150A wasn't supposed to be a major project, but it's kind of spiraled out of control. Uh, but I did an episode on the vacuum tube computer, so the next episode in this uh, cycle would be the Centurion mini computer. But uh, I am just totally snowed under with work. Uh, about Friday afternoon, I got a couple of frantic emails and then a huge stack of work from the office in Japan, and I've been working pretty much nonstop since Saturday morning. Uh, and it just, it hasn't left me any time to do much of anything, but I got mostly caught up and sent all of my work back to Japan. And the end of the workday was a few hours ago and I didn't hear any feedback. So I'm fully expecting the feedback to begin at the beginning of the next workday, but that isn't until about seven o'clock tonight. Uh, so I have a small window here of just a few hours where I'm free. Uh, and it's not enough time to really dig into the Centurion mini computer or any of the big projects, but I have a ton of smaller projects that need attention too. Uh, and so I think what I'm gonna do today is just tackle a small one hour, maybe two hour project. If it takes me two hours, something will have gone horribly wrong. It's a one hour project, uh, but the video is not gonna be that long. So this video is gonna be really short uh, because I just, I don't have a whole lot of time to do it, but hopefully uh, feedback from work won't be that severe and I'll be able to get the next episode out as a proper full length episode. Uh, but if I just sit here doing nothing, I'm gonna go nuts. So let's hop over to the bench and dig into my short one hour project. All right, and so here's what I wanna work on today. This is my TI-2500 data math calculator. And well, I think it's just a, a beautiful looking calculator. It embodies that 1970s design aesthetic almost perfectly. And it does uh, still actually work. So if we go ahead and flip the switch here, we can see that we get our little display up there and we can fill it all up with digits. Add one to those. There we go. Yeah, so it seems to be working just fine. So what exactly is it that I want to do to this today? Well, the problem is with the batteries. Uh, so we can see that it has a little space for a barrel jack here on the top, and that's to charge the batteries on the inside. And when I bought this calculator, the batteries on the inside were obviously trashed. Uh, and so I, well, <laughs> I'm not proud of what I did. Uh, so I'll show you guys what I did, but in order to do that, we gotta crack it open. So we'll just go ahead and flip the calculator over here. And there are just three screws to take out. All right, now that we've got it open, I, well, now I definitely have to fix something. Uh, we can see that the ground wire here has just uh, broken off. I apparently did a uh, poor job soldering that the first time I did it. Uh, but the actual problem that I wanna fix is with the batteries. You can see that I just took some uh, random rechargeable batteries that I found, uh, just soldered them in place of the old ones and called it good. Except that these are, I believe, nickel metal hydride batteries and you shouldn't charge nickel metal hydride batteries without some kind of charger that's meant for it. So my plan today is to uh, replace that with something a little better there. This is a 3.7 volt, 500 milliamp hour uh, lithium polymer battery. Um, it's 500 milliamp hours is probably a little weak. These are uh, 2,500 milliamp hours and the original batteries were 2,200 milliamp hours. So it's probably not gonna run the calculator for as long as it should, uh, but it was just what I bought. Uh, but this being 3.7 volts is obviously not enough to run the calculator and I need to figure out a good way to charge it. And so I also got this. This is the Adafruit Power Boost uh, 500 board. Um, so you just plug the battery in right here uh, and then it gives you five volts out. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, barrel jack, solder it directly to here. So we have our uh, plus five volts in ground to charge the battery. Um, and then the battery will put out five volts out of one of these pins and ground out of one of these pins, which we'll use to power the calculator itself. Uh, and then we can turn the whole thing off if we ground the enable pin of this board. So I will uh, repurpose the power switch over here to ground out the enable pin to turn the whole thing off. All right, first things first, let's get these old batteries out of here. And it's just two screws to get the tie down strap off. 
And then we just need to desolder the uh, ground wire and the power wire. All right, so I'm going to reuse the power switch here, but I'm going to change it up just a little bit. Uh, so we need to remove the power wire and we need to remove these diodes so I can get the switch down to just its kind of vanilla setup. All right, so we'll go ahead and solder new plus and minus wires onto the main uh, calculator board here. Next, we'll solder the plus and minus to the uh, Adafruit power board here. All right, now if I plug the LiPo into here, that should be putting five volts uh, right out to here, which should power on our calculator. So let's see if, uh, if that works here. <laughs> yeah, there we go, check it out. We got a little zero up there. All the buttons seem to be working. All right, so we know that our little LiPo is gonna work. Next, we need to uh, solder up the power switch and the charge circuit. All right, now let's get it all soldered up to the power boost board here. And we'll start with the barrel jack. We'll get the plus and minus soldered in for it. And then we'll solder up the uh, ground and the enable pin for the switch. Next, a little sticky back Velcro to hold it in place. A little sticky back Velcro for the battery too. Just slip it right in there. And then we'll plug it in. See if our on off switch works here. Yeah, there we go. That turned it off. That turns it on. <laughs> awesome, that seems to be working really well. All right, and then as a final test, we'll plug our barrel jack in here. And I believe there is a charge LED on the power boost board here. So we'll see if that charge LED lights up. All right, we, uh, <laughs> we made a slight mistake, and that was not unexpected. Uh, I hooked the barrel jack up to this plus pin over here because this is a header for a USB, and I thought this was the USB in to charge it, uh, but <laughs> nope, that's the USB power out. The USB in to charge it is the micro USB on the left side, uh, which makes it a lot harder to solder in an external uh, solder point to it. All right, so I believe it's uh, actually a little easier than I was expecting. <laughs> I ran over to the computer and double checked on Adafruit's website. Uh, there's an extra pin here that's called USB. That's this one right here that I'm touching with the red wire. Uh, and it says that this is the pin that's directly connected up to the five volts coming from our USB power. So instead of ever plugging anything into here, we could just run the five volts directly into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder that up. All right, now that that's all back into place, we'll go ahead and put the battery back in as well. Circle the wire around here. All right, make sure that we can still turn on and off. Yep, that's on. Yeah, that's going. And if we turn you off and we plug our barrel jack in. Nice, I can see the little orange LED is lit up underneath there and it looks like it's charging. So I think all we need to do now is stuff the whole thing back together. It's gonna be a whole lot lighter weight without that huge battery in it. All right, let's give it a test. There we go. <laughs> nice. It seems to be working perfectly. <laughs> I've got my data math calculator back. I am not afraid to plug my barrel jack into the back of it to charge it up while I'm using it or while it's off. And uh, it seems to work perfectly. This is such a better solution than the uh, nickel metal hydrides that I very uh, embarrassingly put in. But I, I feel like I've rectified the situation and it was a nice one day project. Um, I still have a few hours before the Japan workday begins. Uh, so I'm going to probably spend the rest of my freedom playing a few video games. <laughs> so I wanna thank you all so much for watching and joining me on this uh, rather short episode. Uh, I hope to have a full length episode with the Centurion mini computer next week. Uh, but for now, I'm glad to have my little data math back so I can now use this as my daily driver calculator. So thank you all so much and I hope to see you in the next episode.